This is the first video of section 2 on preparing our development environment. In this video we're going to set up Karma to run our tests and JS Hint to lint our codebase for any code style errors. When you start developing an application, it's always a good idea to set up an ideal workflow beforehand. We will do just that by making sure our code works as intended using unit tests and by verifying that we write clean code that adheres to conventions using JS Hint. The first thing we're going to do is add Karma to our local project in the node modules folder and also install the Karma command line interface globally, which is going to expose the Karma command in our terminal. Let's install it locally first. Type npm install dash dash save Karma and it's going to persist it to our package.json file. And here it is. Karma is a task runner that runs our tests on a set of browsers. These browsers can either be regular browsers like Chrome or Firefox, or something called a headless web browser, which is what PhantomJS is. It's a browser without a graphical interface and is used for various reasons. We're going to use it for running our tests. We'll also install the Karma command line interface globally. This is going to allow us to use the Karma command in the terminal. First thing we need to do is make a Karma configuration file, which is done through Karma init, which we'll do in terminal now. I actually prefer to use Mocha instead of Jasmine for my testing framework, which is a personal preference. So I'm going to select that instead of Jasmine. We won't be using require.js. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to use phantom.js as our browser for running Karma tests. Let's add our source files and also our test files. Now it's going to give us a warning that there are no files yet, but that's fine. We're going to add some files later on anyway. We're not going to need to exclude any files for now. And we also don't need to run any tests on change. There's one thing we have to do inside our Karma configuration file. Well, two things actually. The first thing is to force it to use a single run, which is going to run the tests and then exit the process completely. And the next thing I do, which again is personal preference, I'm going to add Chai as a testing framework as well which exposes a should syntax for testing, which you'll see when we start writing tests. Now, all we have to do is save all this stuff. So type npm install dash dash save, karma mocha, karma chai, and karma phantom js launcher. It's going to save it to our package.json file. The next thing we're going to do is create a little test to make sure that it actually works. Let's call it sanity or something. We're going to create a new file called sanity inside the test directory. Let's create a sanity suite and add a test saying it should work properly or something. Let's say true should equal true. That should obviously work. We're going to run our tests using the karma start command and we also have to give it the path to our karma configuration file. I'm going to start it right now, and there we go. Executed one of one, and obviously it's a success. We'll also add a gulp task to run our tests instead of having to do it manually in terminal. We can remove the placeholder task since we don't really need it anymore, and we'll add a new task called test. Now, Karma is sort of special because you don't need a Gulp plugin wrapper around your Karma to use it in your Gulp file, so you can just use the Karma API inside of your Gulp file straight away. So we're going to require Karma here. Let's start it, pass in the configuration file, which is called karma.conf.js, and force it to single run anyway, just to be safe. We're going to pass in the done callback because it's an asynchronous task. Let's see if it works. Let's run gulp test in our terminal and there we go. It does the same thing as before, just like it should. The next thing we're going to do is add JS hidden to our project, which will allow us to lint our code for any code style mistakes and so on. So the first thing we're going to do again is add it to our dependencies. We're going to install gulp dash JS hint and also JS hint dash stylish. Stylish is another reporter for JS Hint, which is going to make things a little prettier, which is always nice. We're going to require all the needed modules, and we'll create a task for it. Let's call it JS Hint. We're going to return the gulp stream, and we're just going to lint our source files. There's no real need to lint your test files as well. 
I'm going to pipe in JS Hint and also afterwards the JS Hint Stylish Reporter. The last thing we need to do to get JS Hint up and running is to pass it options to know what it should lint for. We're going to create a .js hint rc file in the root of our project. I've got a live template for this with a, a couple of sane default options, max length, indentation, semicolons, and so on. You can look up all the options on the JS hint website, or you can just use the ones I'm using right now. Let's find out if JS hint actually works like it should. Let's create a source file in our source directory. Let's call it JS hint check, for example. We're going to log something, see if it passes any errors, which it shouldn't. There we go, it's all clean. Now let's remove a semicolon and see what it does. Save the file and then run the task again. And there we go, it says it's missing a semicolon, which is obviously what it should do. I've chosen not to add this task to automatically run on file changes. I usually just run it once in a while to see if my code style is still up to snuff, and then make changes if needed. So go ahead and run the JS in task a couple of times during the progression of this course to make sure that our code style adheres to the conventions we've set up. All right, great. Now we have part of our development environment set up like we want it to be, and now we can get on with developing code with confidence. We can test our code and maintain a consistent code style as well, thanks to using JS Hint. In this video lesson, we've set up our development environment so that we can get started working on the actual code. In the next video, we'll build our browser sync and SaaS workflow so we can serve our application and easily modify styles.